Introduction to Neural Networks with Java, Class 10, Part 2. Welcome to Part 2. In this part, we're going to see how to implement a neural network that can predict the sine wave, or the foundations of predicting anything. We're going to see how we take a stream of temporal data and arrange it in such a way so that the neural network can find patterns and attempt to predict it. We will begin by looking at the structure of the program that we create to predict. First, we need to generate the sine wave data. We're going to use a class that we will create called Actual Data. For the stock market, which we will do in the next class session, we will use a similar Actual Data class, but it will actually read the stock market data from a file. Here, for the sine wave, we simply generate the actual data using the actual sine function built into the programming language that we're using. We have three main functions that we will make use of for the actual data. The constructor, which accepts a number of parameters as far as how much input data we have, how much output data we have, and it will call the sign function and generate the training data, or the actual data that we will use to generate the training data. The get input data function is called to actually generate the input for the neural network. It does this off of a fixed location that we pass into it and it generates as many data points as we desire. The get output function works similarly. You tell it how many output data elements you want, in this case one, and it will generate the data as though it were for the output. We use both of these to generate the data for the training set we also use them again to generate input and expected outputs for validation of the neural network. We're going to now look at each of these three in detail. We begin with the constructor. It accepts three parameters. The first is the size of the actual data that we're producing, and then it needs to know the input and the output size for the neural network. The input size is the number of elements that we're using to predict, the output size is the number that we're actually predicting. First, we create an array that holds the, the actual data that we're going to produce according to the size. We then record the input and output size this is for later when we want to actually generate them. And then we create a starting angle, which is 0. Then we're going to loop over the entire length of that we specified for the actual data. And we're going to calculate the sign using degrees, and we're going to calculate this at 10 degree intervals. This gives us a complete set of actual data for the size that we specified. The get input data accepts an offset for where in the actual data we want to generate a input data set from, and then it also accepts a target array. The target array we are going to actually output to and we are going to fill the target array with the input according to the input size that we specified in the constructor. So it's going to loop starting at the offset. As you can see, it initializes all of the target variable array elements to the corresponding actual elements as specified by the offset. This is used to generate input data both for the training and for the validation phases. We will call this over and over and over again to generate input data for the training set when we are performing the training operation. There is also a corresponding get output data. It works very similar to the get input data. It retrieves output values from each of the output neurons from the actual data. These are the ideal outputs that we are expecting. During the training phase, this produces the ideal outputs that we are going to pass into the supervised training algorithm, in this case backpropagation, to allow the network to be trained to produce these outputs. During the validation phase, these outputs are the real values that we're actually hoping for from the neural network. When we validate, we are going to go over the entire range, not just what we were trained on, and calculate using the get output data and determine what the actual difference is between what we expected and what we didn't. We're going to see the validation phase in the next class part as we see how this program is actually run. 
This concludes part two. In the next part, we're going to see how to predict the obvious. We're going to try to predict the sine wave. We hope you will continue with part three. Thank you. This course is based on our Introduction to Neural Network Programming books for Java and also Introduction to Neural Networks for C Sharp. Available in both paperback and ebook format.